Libra, happy new year. It's Susan here with a video to give you an overview of your year 2024. So this is for Libra sun, moon rising. Um, it's a significant year for Librans. And so uh, there's quite a lot to uh, get you involved with other people, with your own self growth, with your own creativity. And we'll have a look at all of that starting from January. So as I mentioned, it's from for sun, moon and rising sign. Um, do read the comments in the in below the video so you can see more information, more details about the outer planets and their transits, because I don't have the time to go into all of the meanings and details here. So I will definitely, of course, be reposting videos throughout the year and, um, and giving you the details and highlights as we go. We're going to start with Pluto in your fifth house. That's a really nice transit. So you're having Pluto trining the first house. Pluto in the fifth house can have you really working hard towards your own self-expression, really growing in the way that you um, come out to the world in terms of your desire for um, be being seen, being noticed, um, uh, stepping up in your creativity. If you're an entrepreneur or that type of person, this is really going to be very powerful for you, a really great time to be uh, developing those kinds of skills or, or um, expanding your investment skills, for example, that's a, another really great way of using Pluto in the fifth. Um, it can transform your creative um, mode. If you're an artist already, or if you're a creative type, or if you're somebody who writes, you know, you have Sagittarius on the third house ruled by Jupiter. So you might be um, a writer or somebody who has great artistic talent as often with, um, with Libra, especially Libra rising. Um, then Pluto might have you decide to go from I don't know, like film to writing something like writing scripts instead of being behind the camera, or you want to uh, pick up a camera and start to become a photographer or something like that. So if, if there is a, an artistic streak in you, then this would be uh, some something that's changing and it's changing you as it's changing the actual medium that you're using. Now, if you're not an artist, you might also feel that sense of being pulled towards it. Uh, if, for example, you don't have children, this can also change your desire to have children um, one way or another. Or if you have children, this will change your relationship with children and it will also change their lives uh, as the, of course, it's uh, over 20 years. So this is not something that's going to happen overnight, but it's definitely um, going to relate to all of the things that you create and that includes your children. Uh, all of your babies, including a business, if you have a, a business baby. Um, and so the sun is preceding Pluto. It goes into your fifth house uh, about 11 hours before Pluto. So that I find really significant as well, because the fact that they enter together really just adds an extra emphasis. Now you had a glimpse of this between the 23rd of March and the 11th of April <laughs> last year, 2023. Um, and so you, you have... Uh, covered a little bit of this territory already, except that Pluto is now moving up to two degrees this year, and it's going to retrograde at two degrees on the 2nd of May. And so it's covering new territory. And then from the 2nd of May until the 2nd of, um, where are we, until the 11th of October, Pluto is retrograde. On the 2nd of uh, September, Pluto goes back into your fourth house and it stays there through September, October, and the first three weeks of November. Um, and so there you're going to have a glimpse of what the last 15 years was like, um, more in a way to kind of tie up loose ends and, and uh, double check that you learned the lessons of the fourth house, which was something to do with your roots, your family, or your sense of foundation and possibly also how that affected your career. Um, now on the, uh, where are we here? On the 5th, 19th of February, we have um, a very significant conjunction between Ch Chiron and the North Node in your seventh house of relationships. Um, your seventh house is super activated this year, really strongly, especially in the early months of the year. Um, and but you yourself, the first and sec seventh house are both equally um, power empowered and activated this year for radical shape shifting, radical change. Um, so Pluto is transforming you on the one level with the fifth house, uh, but it's also um, the the nodes, the nodal axis, which creates the eclipses, which is transforming you as it goes through the first and the seventh. Um, 
so pretty much throughout the middle of February, the um, little asteroid Chiron is conjunct the North Node or Rahu. We, we can call it Rahu as well. Um, and it's exact on the 19th at 16 degrees and 45 minutes of Aries. And there's a, at the beginning of the year, uh, Chiron is at 15 and the North Node is at 19. Uh, and those degree sort of divisions are extremely important between January and um, April. So all the way through January to the end of April, those are really significant degrees. Um, and we'll see why in a moment, but just to keep in mind, if you have planets or points between say 13 degrees or up to 21, 22 degrees of Libra, so that's a, that's a big chunk of the sign. Um, it's about a, almost a third of the sign. Um, this will affect you very strongly. Um, so, so pay attention to what's going on in February. This is about healing in relationships. It's about healing, overgiving. It's about healing any sense of not being um, worthy in relationships or not. Um, well, it's not so much that you're not getting your way. It's maybe not getting a feeling of recognition or maybe uh, having a feeling of timidness or shyness or feeling of woundedness around relating. And this is definitely something that Chiron is going to be working through. So you will definitely have an opportunity to heal some of that as the year goes on um, and, and really start to notice how you are transforming through relationships as this year goes on. It's a very powerful year for you all the way through the year and into January, the first half of January, 2025. Um, since basically July of 2023, you're, you're really shape-shifting in terms of how you connect in relationships and who you are in relationships. Um, so then in March, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse in Libra. Um, and that eclipse is going to be really powerful for you in terms of your own uh, letting go, your own sense of what, it, what you're ready to um, let go of, uh, what you're ready to um, uh, give up, as it were, of yourself. Um, and how you want to uh, go forward in your in your experience in your life um, that that's something where the moon is there in your first house you realize something about yourself this may be about part of what we we're understanding in February with that Chiron and the north node and and recognizing this feeling of what it is that you're ready to shed uh, what it is that you are um, acknowledging about yourself uh, what you want also what you desire and how you want to change that um, and then that takes you into the next eclipse, which is in Aries, again, in your seventh house of relationship, the other person across the table from you. Um, and that is at 19 degrees of Aries conjunct exactly Chiron. So here we come back to that 19th degree. Remember that Chiron was at 15. The North Node was at 19 at the beginning of the year. Now they've reversed. So now we've got Chiron, the sun and the moon at 19 degrees and the North Node at 15. And so you're, you're once again, that same area of life from February through till April is really being um, strongly, strongly um, emphasized. It's, um, it's an opportunity for you to grow through relationships and let something new come in. Now, if there's a stellium at the same time in your seventh house, as well as a Mercury retrograde in your seventh house, just for good measure, uh, Mercury is retrograde there from the first until the 25th of April. So there's a lot going on in your house of relationship. Um, you might just want to sit down every now and then and kind of catch your breath and figure out what all of this means for you. Um, as there's going to be quite a lot of energy there in the house of the other and how you relate to the other. Then later in the month, the 21st of April, but actually in act sort of um, in orb all the way through April, we have the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your eighth house at 21 degrees, 50 minutes of Taurus. Um, and then the sun has just moved into your eighth house at the same time. Um, this is where you find, oh, by the way, at that eclipse, we have Venus in your seventh house as well. So there's, there's a lot going on there in the eclipse period of April. Then Venus moves into your eighth house uh, shortly after, towards the end of uh, April. And at the time of the 21st of April, we have the exact conjunction of uh, Jupiter and Uranus, and the sun has moved into your eighth house 
um, in, the, in the first degree of the eighth house at the same time. Venus is still in your seventh house. So this could be something new and in your awareness of understanding what's going on in terms of intimacy, what you need in relationships. It might be that there's new um, earnings or some, some abundance coming in from your partner, um, especially as Venus is in your seventh at the same time, ruling this particular conjunction of the Jupiter and Uranus in the eighth house of what you share with others, what you might be feeling you receive from others. It could also be that there's something you need to pay out as well that can, uh, can also work like that. I would have to see your natal chart. Um, uh, because Venus herself in Mars is not in great dignity. She prefers to be in your house. Uh, she's ruling Libra and she's in her uh, detriment in um, in the seventh, in the, in Aries. And so, so there could be, it can go either way. I would need to see your chart, but there's some surprise or some un awareness, some insight, some new thing that's coming in in terms of things that you share with others. Uh, support from others. It can also be um, an understanding psychologically, something around what you understand about yourself, um, what you recognize in terms of your own um, unconscious processes or something that comes from family stories, um, hidden secrets, this house of secrets. It might be some like, oh my God, revela revelation around something going on in the family or potentially a revelation around what's going on with your uh, marriage, depending, I would have to see your natal chart again to figure that one out. Um, nonetheless, it's difficult, just like an eclipse energy, it's difficult to predict that and especially difficult when I don't see your chart. So uh, let's just call it something new, insightful and unexpected in your eighth house of shared resources, other people's money. Now, the eighth house is also occult. It's also stuff that you know from intuition or that you that can grow through your unconscious mind or your your um, more mystical awareness of life. And so that can also be quite a magical thing for you. It can be something that's incredibly insightful that's happening. Now, again, I'd need to see your natal chart to, to know what that means. Um, so Jupiter is ruling Saturn all this while in your sixth house. Saturn is moving from the third degree until the 19th degree in your sixth house all through the year. And, um, and so we have Saturn in uh, uh, at stationing retrograde on the 30th of June in the 19th degree. And, uh, and so that's at the same time that Jupiter will have uh, moved into your ninth house. So uh, Saturn is still playing a supporting role here uh, with regards to Jupiter, but it becomes a little more tense. And so there can be some obstacles. It's like your everyday commitments are not preventing you from reaching out into what it is that you want to do. So that can happen at a couple of different points in the year. Um, there, There is, for example, when Saturn goes in uh, the retrograde, it's going to back up into a square with Jupiter at 17, 18 degrees, and that's on the 19th of August. And then again, you're going to have that square from the sixth house of obligations, everyday uh, concerns, and also your health. Um, it's going to back up into a square with Jupiter in your ninth house uh, on the 24th of December again, and that time it's going to be at 14 degrees. Um, so these are, the ninth house is very uh, supportive for you, having Jupiter in the ninth. Oh, I think I forgot to mention the, the Jupiter ingress. Let's back up a little bit. Sorry. So we didn't tell you that. There you go. Jupiter's moving into your ninth house. Uh, very, very good for Libra. Uh, good for all the air signs. And, um, and Jupiter will, not only will it go into your ninth house on the 25th of May, but just before that, Jupiter is conjunct Venus on the 23rd, conjunct the sun on the 24th, uh, sextiling Neptune in your sixth house on the 24th and then on the 25th moves into your ninth house as well as the sun and Venus so you're getting this fantastic energy boost in your ninth house it'll have you feeling very optimistic about the future very optimistic and you know keep in mind Venus is your ruler she loves being um, in the ninth house she loves learning she loves expanding she loves being in Taurus as well. She rules Taurus, so she's been ha very happy for the previous month in um, in uh, April, in May rather. She's been in your eighth house, um, but uh, but that connection with the Sun, Venus, and uh, Jupiter moving into your ninth is also forming a trine to Pluto in your fifth house, and so that's really expansive. There's lots of uh, beauty in that, lots of benefit in that. 
uh, expansive ideas for the future, your, your beliefs, or maybe your spiritual energy is highlighted there. Uh, it's a renewed sense of purpose, a renewed sense of wanting to learn something, wanting to grow. Um, but then there we go with Saturn. Now Saturn then comes in a little bit grouchy over the summer and says, are you sure about all this stuff? You want all these things to happen. Are you really sure you can cope with this? Can you manage? It seems like a lot of work. Are you able to handle it? So Jupiter rules your third house of your everyday activity, your busyness, communications, and it also rules your sixth house of everyday work and habits and so on. And so Saturn comes in and is like, are you, are you biting off more than you can chew? Should you slow your roll a little bit here? Um, do you need to uh, go over the details? Because Jupiter in uh, Gemini is kind of like, yeah, 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 it's all going to be fine. Don't worry. And, um, and, and so there is this kind of uh, check from Saturn, as I mentioned, in August, the 19th of August, and again on the 24th of December. Um, it's not enough to prevent things from going your way. It's just that it will slow things down and it might require a uh, review of what your plans are, or it might feel like an obstacle, but, but overall later, the idea is either you're too dispersed and you're doing too much and therefore you need to really scale it back, or you realize actually that wasn't the right thing anyway, I need to do this differently, or I need, need to do something completely different. Um, either way, it's a welcome check. The, the Saturn-Jupiter can work really, really well together, especially because Jupiter is ruling Saturn at this point. On the 4th of September, we have Mars going into Cancer, which is your 10th house. So this is a big deal uh, because that is going to be in a square to your sign. So that's um, significant for Librans. It can be significant career progress. You'll be feeling a drive and ambition. It's going to be trining your sixth house where Saturn is. Uh, when Mars trines Saturn, it brings a lot of uh, willpower and a desire for success. So that can be really, really energizing for you. Now it's going to be there for ages. So we've got uh, basically from the 4th of September until into um, November, we've got uh, Jupiter, your Mars in your 10th house in Cancer. It goes into your 11th house in Leo and stops at six degrees on the 5th of December. Um, and then it's going to retrograde from Leo back into your 10th house. And then it stays there, basically something crazy like January till April. I'll talk more about this later in the year. Um, but basically to say that from the 4th of September, when Mars moves into your 10th house, all the way through uh, April, Mars will be in your 10th house, essentially with a little bit of a blip into the 11th. And for the rest of the time, Mars will be in Leo in your 11th house until pretty much the beginning of June. So almost 10 months in the 10th and 11th house. So what that says is that from, the, from September, all the way through the first half of 2025, you're on fire in terms of your social status, your career, your ambition, your drives, your vision for the future, your participation in groups, um, your, your sense of what it is that you're here for. The only thing to be aware of is to avoid stepping on toes. And so that's just a, a little word of caution. Uh, there. Um, and uh, But it will absolutely bring you a lot of recognition and uh, decisiveness around your career um, that can have you uh, expanding in terms of your career or accelerating your career growth, especially with Saturn in the sixth, because with Saturn, which works really well for Libra, and Saturn is, is exalted in Libra, so always giving you good results. Um, Saturn is... Um, it's helping you work hard. So the only thing to be careful of, again, is that Jupiter in the ninth house, trining your first house, uh, can have you kind of all over the shop. And especially as Mars is going to be up at the top of your chart, that ambition and drive can have you uh, tending to burn out. So be careful of that. We then have an eclipse in the Pisces and uh, Virgo axis, the sixth and the twelfth houses, of your chart, so the health houses, the mental, physical health, the spiritual health, um, your relationship to your everyday work. And so we're going to have a, a full moon in Pisces at 25 degrees. So sixth uh, house of Pisces, 25 degrees, and the sun would be at 25 of Virgo in your 12th house. 
Um, and that is, um, is a really significant awareness of what's coming in 2025 and the first half of 2026, because that's the first time now that we're going to have eclipses in that zone. Now, the nodes don't change. They don't leave the Libra Aries axis until the middle of January. But because there's a bit of overlap in terms of where the nodes are and where the eclipse is happening, we're pulling the seventh and sixth houses together and we're pulling the first and twelfth houses together in this um, eclipse process. Um, I will talk more about that later, but just to keep in mind that that's going to be coming through where a lot of this energy is already with the Saturn and, um, and Neptune in your sixth house. So that might actually bring you some clarity in terms of your work. Or it might, on the other hand, um, show you where you have been overgiving, because Neptune in the sixth can be a real strong message of overgiving in work, doing too much, um, you know, working weekends, stuff like that. Uh, so that moon can, can highlight that, especially because it's in the health and healing axis. It might be like, you know what, you haven't been listening, so we're going to make you lie down in bed for two weeks, because that's the only way we get you to stop. So just to pay attention to that. Um, then on the 2nd of October, there's an eclipse in your first house, Libra, and that is the solar annular eclipse. An annular eclipse is when there's a ring of sun or a ring of fire around the moon, and the moon isn't completely covering the, the sun. Um, I, they're my favorites. I think they look beautiful. And, um, and that is at 10 degrees, and that's conjunct Mercury. And so you'll have a... Um, if you have, let's say, three degrees on either side of that, so let's say seven degrees until about 13-ish degrees of your sign, that's going to be very impactful for you. And of course, uh, there's other placements that can be affected. I need to see your chart to see that. But um, nonetheless, that's going to be quite powerful because it's another opportunity for you to recognize where it's time to let go, where it's time for you to, um, to change a way of showing up that one is conjunct Mercury. So there's something in your first house where you're recognizing um, I need to think differently about myself. I need to um, uh, I need to become more aware of how I am in communicating or in relationships or in, in terms of how I express my needs and, um, and that Mercury can help you with that. You might be able to express emotional needs um, with that uh, Mercury in the first house. Um, what else have we got here? So yeah, we've, did I mention that Pluto opposition? I, I'm not sure that I did. So let's just do it again, just in case we've got on the 3rd of November, we have an opposition from uh, Mars to Pluto, and that's coming from your 10th house to your fourth house uh, at the 29th degree of Capricorn. So in your fourth house, 29 Capricorn, uh, where Mars is at 29 uh, Cancer in your 10th house. Uh, if you have anything in Libra at 29 or give or take a couple of degrees on either side, this will square that. And that's quite uh, impactful for you. So pay attention to that first week, let's say, of November, um, because that's going to be impactful, especially globally. I think we'll see some things uh, accelerating. Some real impact it can often lead to uh, tension. In your case, it's going to be potentially a tension between what you want or what you feel comfortable with or what you need psychologically, emotionally, materially to feel comfortable compared to what you feel ob obligated to do in your career. And again, that can come from uh, your loved ones saying, hey, you're working too much. We never see you at home, uh, which is good because you want them to say that. Uh, you don't want them to say, we're delighted that you're never home. So, And then also your ruler Venus at the same time is in your third house, uh, Sagittarius third house, ruled by Jupiter in your ninth house in opposition to that Jupiter at 20 degrees. So your ruler Venus in your third opposite Jupiter. Um, this can be actually something quite um, good for you, depending again on where you have planets or points at those degree points. Uh, so this is happening at the same time as this opposition to Pluto Mars. Um, so it mitigates that a little bit. And, and for you, especially the third house, ninth house is a, an axis of traveling. Uh, it's an axis of awareness and communication. Given that in just a month before you've had this Mercury going through your first house, you're kind of becoming more uh, uh, aware of what you need to express perhaps at the same time. 
Um, so I think we've covered it all. The, the juicy bits have been covered, uh, Libra. So I wish you every success in 2024. Have a fantastic year ahead and I'll see you in the next video.